Hi everybody. I'm working with a 14 inch wreath base. Yes, 14 inch from the Dollar Tree. I'm doing the bubble method with 10 inch mesh. At each one of the crossbars, I put a full pipe cleaner. Here's a crossbar, here's a crossbar. So I put six full on there, and then I cut all the rest of the pipe cleaners in half. Now what I'm doing is, I know some of you are familiar with the bubble method, some aren't. Most people do use 21 inch mesh, but for my project, I'm using 10 inch mesh. All right, so I'm measuring 10 inches, and then I'm holding it taut, putting a pipe cleaner in here, and attaching it to the two met middle crossbars and twisting it really good. All right, and then I untuck it and move it over. Because I'm using the 10 inch mesh instead of the 21 inch mesh, you're actually going to use more than one roll. And in each section, you're going to get between seven and eight. The first section, I'm going to do eight. I already started it. So right now I've got about four on here. So when I go to do the next bubble, I tuck excuse me, I tuck my ends underneath and then I gather 10 inches and I push it to the side. Still holding it tight, I grab it underneath and I attach it to the two metal bars and twist it really well to keep it in place. At the end, I will go back and clean all those up, but for now, I'm just leaving them that way. Now, we already have five on here. Again, doing the same thing. The bubble method is time consuming because it's a lot of tucking and tying underneath, but it makes for a nice wreath. Now, I will explain as we go on what I'm doing. I'm actually using a neutral color and it will all tie in at the end and you will understand why. But for now, so we've got six. This is number seven. So you can use 10 inches. I mean 10 inch mesh with 10 inch bubbles or like a bubble poof. Still gonna give my wreath the same effect that I was looking for. So we've got seven on there now. I've got room for one more. And then I will start the next layer. So the bubble method is not just for 21 inch. You see, I'm making sure I pull all my layers out. I want them to go like this. All right, now we're gonna start on the next layer, which with this layer, I'm gonna actually use the crossbar to hold it in place. I just found that that helps secure the next row and then I take it under and I twist it with the rest. It just makes for a nice stopping and starting point. I 
I know it's very repetitious, but you won't be sorry when you see what I'm going to do. Next section, I may only need seven. I've already done two. But again, you're just pushing it over to make room for the next bubble. It's time consuming, but it's a, it's a pretty method. It's a nice, basic, even, um, even designed wreath. Like I said, you'll, you'll see at the end why I'm using this. Comments. I have links to my Etsy store, my Facebook page. If you're not signed up to get alerts when I go live, please subscribe and make sure you hit the bell to be notified. Now this is going to be set up probably as a premiere on YouTube. I felt that it was important to put it up here and have it time stamped. See, let's go back to the crossbar. One, two, three, four, five, six. You always want to cut your pipe cleaners in half because you don't need a full one. You're just going to end up cutting a lot of the waste off. So you might as well save yourself some money ahead of time. Let's do one more. Oops. This is a mesh. Um, it's not burlap. It's a mesh. Um, a deco mesh. So don't think I'm working with burlap here and not wearing the proper um, gear. I'm not breathing in fibers because, like I said, this is a mesh. All right, now we're going to go back to our crossbar and tie it in place there. And as I showed you, I'm going to take it underneath. Put it under here and at the end you can go back and you can link all your pipe cleaners together tie up any loose ends see what we've got so far going to make a bow for this wreath. This wreath is going to be for the 4th of July.
four, five, Like I said, you'll need two rolls, probably one and a half, but then you can save the next one, the half one, for your next one. I would encourage you making one for yourself to keep on hand because you may need it in the future for reference on measurements and such. Quite tight enough. There we go. All right, now we're going to go to the cross. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Get to check out my Etsy shop. I do make signs. All these signs will be in there. past the halfway point. That's a good way to use up a half roll of leftover mesh. Just get another roll to match it. to pull it down like this so you get the uniformity in the design that you're looking for. Actually just bending it over the two bars before I flip it. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's see I'm just bending it gently over the two bars and then twisting from the back. There we go. Lost count. Three, four, five, six. Let's stand one more in there. You want it kind of full. You want it kind of packed. <clears throat> the two middle bars, pulling it down underneath and twisting. I need it a little tighter. There we go. Okay. 
may be able to get a couple loops out of this. We'll see. under and then tie it underneath now let's see if we can get another one out of this before we have to put the next one on yep we can all right so you're only really using a small amount of the second roll. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and tuck this under and pull it back this way. Trim some of this off. Then I will take a zip tie and pull it back here and zip tie it to the frame. I'm pulling it back the opposite direction so it gets it out of my way so I can continue on and not have it interfering. And I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter then I'm tucking that under because I don't want it cutting my customer. Okay. So we've got one in the new section. Let's pull these down. Okay. Now we're going to start on our second roll. So actually, I could have attached that with the other one. But I still can. I'm going to pull it with the second one, just trying to get the ends to meet up, and then I'll trim it a little. Let's see if I have another pipe cleaner, or zip tie. Yep. I'm using the smaller ones on this. Now what I could have done to save myself an extra zip tie, I could have put both of them in the same zip tie just to make it a little neater. Oops. I pulled it around the center bar. I don't want it around the center bar. I want to stay with the two in the middle. So that requires a new one. tuck that down and then cut from underneath. There we go. All right, we're ready to continue. And we only have two sections left, so we're we're almost done. I'm tucking the ends under again. And we're back in business. Bending over the two middle bars. Just trying to even it up a little. And then twisting. And then pulling apart and pushing over.
makes for a nice full wreath. I'm going to put one more in there because I will not have used a full roll or a full half so I have some that I can play with and I again want to make it a little fuller and then we'll make our bow after we're done here. This is going to go to the crossbar. And then we only have about seven more to go. And so I don't have to keep track and count. I'm going to put my seven pipe cleaners up here. So I know when I've hit that last pipe cleaner that we have enough in there. Work smarter, not harder. Right? Pulled it through the wrong way. And then I want to tuck this from the crossbar down underneath. easy for your mesh to get twisted around. You can just maneuver it until it's untwisted. Another trick so these don't all get in your way, kind of keep pushing them this direction. It's a little harder towards the end. more to go. And then we get to the fun part. And as mesh goes, you will end up having to snip a few of the ends here and there. Okay. 
not going to put a sign on until the very end. And I'll explain why after we get the bow done. You know what I got enough for one more in there so I'm gonna go ahead and stick another one in there I just think it'll look nicer now I'm gonna trim this off bring it through the back of the wreath here. Trim a little more off. And then I'm going to take these two together and zip tie them to the wreath base. I'll go back at the end and I will, you know, clean this off a little, trim it some more. Okay, there we are. So there is the bubble method done with 10 inch mesh. Okay. All right. And now we're going to do our bow. And this is our sign. It says Independence Day. And these are the color choices I've chosen. I'm going with all the colors in the sign. Okay. I already have my pipe, my uh, zip ties in here. There we go. Ooh, some of the stuff's up my nose. All right. I mean, you all know I like to use the, uh, um, what's it called? The tinsel ties. I, I really love the tinsel tie. Let's move her up there a little. All right, I'm going to use about a 14 inch tail. Work smarter, not harder. What am I going to learn? <laughs> I want the red next. Come on. I don't like that. It's not going through that one. There we go. Thought it went through all of them. My husband built me this. There we go. There. All right. Then I'm going to do a six inch loop. And the same on this side. I'm going to do four loops of the red. And I'm going to use the bottom loop on each one to measure it. Go 
on with a 14 inch tail. Man, I have messed myself up. I got my thing turned around here, my board, my mat. That doesn't look like it's the same. So, well, I guess I'm making them eight. All right. Next one I'm going to use is this one. All the ribbon here is from Sims. I'm just going to measure off the loop I have there and twist. I'm going to go just a half inch difference on this. four again. like this one too. So, got myself going backwards here. I tell you, there's not supposed to be burlap in here, but I think there's a little because it's flying around in my nose. came out. There we go. Ha! Uh, only on a recording. Dave, you son of a gun. See, I behaved myself. gonna come out again. Son of a gun. All right, we're gonna do it the other way. Maddie. She's yelping at, or barking at me because I'm making noise. to get some of the red and white in there because it goes well with the sign. And I'm going to keep that the same size as the blue ones. That way they can kind of hold each other up. got one more to go so if it falls it falls just have to hold it I'm trying let's try this one okay This one, I'm just going to do one. 
one loop. Just want a little bit of that blue out front. I don't think my easy bow is going to make it. <laughs> okay. I have a bigger one here. So I'm going to pull on this to kind of put it in place, and then I'm going to add my tinsel tie through the back of it. That's going to hold it on my wreath base. Now, this tinsel tie, I get mine at Sims, Trendy Tree. Um, I love, I love how they just hold everything so nicely. Let's try and pull it a little more before I cut it. There we go. All right, looking for my left box. Fix that easy though. All right, I use my tinsel tie to hold it in place. First, I'm going to go through and take care of my ends. Now, I do do custom signs, so say you like this background and you want a different dog in the middle. Well, I can do that. All right, here we go. Now we're going to work from the back to the front. So I want all my tails to come down in the front. So when you're fluffing out, you're putting your fingers in and you're pulling like that. Okay, now this one, I'm going to put in between the, the, so I'll have a star, red, star, red. We want to get our blue up and out. And then our red. I'm staggering blue, red, blue, red. And then my little one in the middle, I'm going to flatten out this way, and it's going to cover my zippy tie. See that? Now with some of these, I'm going to do this. With this one, I think I'm going to roll. I kind of like little curlies. For the, the blue stripe and then the red and white. I may even do it with the white stars. 
and then I'll just have my red and my my beige hanging down here. No, I think I'm going to leave the, the two and a half inchers uncurled and leave these curlies. There we go. Okay. So there's our bow. I'm going to do is I'm going to have my bow hanging down. I could put it here, but I think I'm going to hang it down. And I think this is going to be my base right here. So with that, just going to find a middle point here and put it down in between the bubbles. Again, I'm going to stick to the two middle. I'm going to have it resting on top of the bubbles. So I don't want to pull it all the way down. Just going to have it resting. And you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to fluff some more the nature of bows. Okay, so there's what we've got so far. All right, now this is where it gets interesting. And I don't, let me see if I can do this with my scissors. I can. All right, this is actually a pie plate from Dollar, Dollar Tree. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this to my base. You see what I'm doing? I'm going to have to fluff my bow again. I just know it. There's all my little zippy ties. There's three. And the big one, I'll see for the hanger. Get a little one here. There we go. All right. Now you're gonna have to. I would have used a hole punch, but I didn't have the hole punch with me. So you don't want you want to use some kind of a hole punch because you don't want jagged edges. But like I told you, this one's gonna be mine. And I'll show you why. Oops, went over too far. All right, it's all right, we'll adjust it. We'll do this side. The best thing to do is work with it and center it first. We'll do the top and bottom. And one more. Probably the best thing to do would be to use um, is uh, a nail, you know, hammer a hole in there. All right, I'll go back and trim these later. But for right now, this is what it looks like. Y'all see it? Okay, all right. 
Now, the reason I put this here is because I'm going to glue some styrofoam in here because this I should have used um, a different method, but you can use styrofoam, you can use a block of wood. When I did this with the pull through method, the um, loops were lower, so you can do this with a pull through method. I just didn't have any of the um, burlap to do this. But I would put a piece of wood in here, use um, E6000, whatever it takes, all right? Then I have, I had, and I didn't bring it down with me. Yes, I did. <clears throat> To the back of your sign, you're going to add the loopy part of your Velcro. Now, E6000 works really good with this. Then you're going to add the sticky part. The sticky part is the one with the really stiff, um, stiff side. That is going to get attached to your wood on the inside. Then this is going to get attached like that all right now the whole reason for doing this is you want to upsell to your customers you don't want the hassle of having to send a wreath every time for every occasion no all right what you're going to do all right you're going to sell this as a basic wreath kit to the customer it's going to come with a sign. It's going to come with a bow. The next holiday, they're going to, you're going to contact them and you're going to say, okay, it's time to change your wreath. How about Halloween now? You're going to add the Velcro to the back. They're just going to pull this off, unhook their bow by undoing the back. And you're going to sell them a sign with a bow. Boom. This is the whole reason behind making it um, neutral. Because you want that neutral base to go with any holiday. You get me? So this is going to have a piece of the Velcro attached already to the back. They're going to have this like this. So they're just going to pull this undo this put this aside for the next time you can even add embellishments if you wanted like here's some little daisies or butterflies so you could have your sign with some embellishments look i could add some spiders okay and then a big bow and boom they can change it out every time now, I would not suggest using those, um, like, one-use pizza pans. These are pretty secure. They're not as good as your regular baking ones, but they don't collapse like the other ones do. So you're actually just adding a spacer using the E6000 glue, gluing it in place. That that spacer is going to have the stiff side of the velcro attached to it and they're going to get mailed heck you could even do a wreath of the season club sell this as your basic wreath and then every season you tell them you have a new sign with a new bow to go with it you get you get me awesome way to upsell to your customers heck you could even make some flags and sell a flag to match but this is awesome 
And like I said, the E6000 glue works really good. If not, you can buy the sticky type Velcro. Walmart carries it and, and Amazon carries it. But I would really suggest buying this by the yard because you're going to use more of the soft side than you are the sick, sticky side. So you don't want to waste a bunch of Velcro. Okay, so sell them this wreath and then say, guess what? If you want to be part of the wreath of the season club or wreath of the holiday club, I can contact you at such and such a date and let you know what the next grouping is going to be. And then boom. These are the round signs. All they need to do is pull it off, put a new sign on, untwist this from the back, and you've got an all year customer. And they've got a nice wreath that's gonna hold up. Nothing's gonna rust out on here. And like I said, you can use um, wood as a spacer. You can have your husband drill a hole through there, drill a hole through there, put a, put a screw through there with a washer and a lug nut or whatever they're called on the other end. And then boom, they've got, you've got a customer for the year. Okay. Very simple. Every carpenter, every handy husband has wood laying around and you can just attach it to that. Or you can use the, um, or if you sell unique in the creek boards, you can do the same thing. You can decorate this and then put your wreath sign in the middle and Velcro it off so they can swap it at the end of each season. So there you go. There's my idea for upselling to your customers. Each year, you know, you're gonna have different signs. This is if you make signs. If you don't make signs, um, you can buy them. You can contact any um, sign person Even if you buy your signs on Etsy, contact the person you buy your signs from and say, you know, if I, if I order 10, is there a break? But for those of us that make the signs, this is an awesome way to upsell to our customers and keep them happy throughout the year. It's your basic wreath base. Boom. You got it. So you've got a dollar into, I think these come two or three for a dollar. And you've got your Dollar Tree wreath base, your Dollar Tree pizza pan, okay? You've got the one time cost of shipping the wreath. And this one is not gonna cost a lot to ship. It's not heavy, you know, you've got your bow. And then when you send your sign in the bow, it's not that expensive either. If they know how to make these, set it up as a wreath kit. Sell them the wreath kit. And then you can say, you know, next month, blah, 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 blah. I have a sign and this. I have heard from so many elderly people that they prefer um, wreaths by the season. Okay? You can do a season sign, seasonal sign, and a seasonal bow. They don't have a lot of place to store things. So this just makes it more convenient for them. Okay. If you do the pull through method, you won't need this spacer because the pull through method is going to have it down in here more. I use the bubble method. So I wanted it up here higher. Okay. Heck, you can even use your leftover leftover rolls when you don't have any ribbon on it and that's the perfect height attach it in there although your paper might get soggy so then that's not a good idea but you get my drift okay styrofoam 
It's going to be protected by the sign and protected by the plate. It's going to make it easier to ship. It's lighter. If you don't have styrofoam, do a spacer. Um, I'm sure, I know Dollar Tree has those little Jenga blocks. You could make those Jenga blocks into a little spacer to put in there. Now this is going to be the first in my series of Yorkie signs. There's my um, 4th of July. I'm going to have a Halloween. I'm going to have a Thanksgiving. I'm going to have a Christmas. I'm going to have a Valentine's Day. So you can see I can sell, resell to that customer what I already um, sold them once. This is just a simple twisting of this off putting it back in there, pulling the Velcro, and putting this back in place. But like I said, I would definitely go to somewhere where they sell it by the yard because you're going to need more of the soft Velcro than you will the stiff Velcro. Okay? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I go live. I appreciate you all taking the time out to listen to me and watch me design. I hope I've given you some ideas. Um, I even had some stars that I painted and I was going to glue them to a tinsel tie and kind of make them go around. So you can make all kinds of embellishments and add that way. Okay? All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping. See you soon.